What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Candy in the Game. We are in season one, episode four, Spilling Old Lady G. Well, no. Hold on. I'm sorry. Spilling OLGT. Okay, so, you know, you got Brandon and this episode kind of irked me a little bit because this is what I'm saying, like, Candy just fire everybody. If y'all don't want people to say things about the show, or not the show, or the restaurant, um, you know, voice their opinions or whatever without fear of them get girl, just fire everybody, okay? I, I would not be surprised. And I'm sorry to say this because I actually like a few of the people that's truly on the show. They bring a little bit of character. They bring a little fun. They bring the drama, okay? But since we hit, keep on having all these complaints and y'all keep going through all these managers and shit, maybe you just need to fire the whole staff. I would not be surprised if we come back for a season two and it's a whole different, you know, waitress staff, bartender staff, managerial staff, and everything. Because what I tell y'all asses, they don't respect Brandon because Brandon barely do a damn thing. And he don't, he's so lax in everything that he do. He up there kicking it and uh, 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 FaceTiming Dom Unique, okay? You gonna come to my party? You know it's gonna be my birthday party. I just wanna have you there. I said, you know, <laughs> she like, I don't know if I gonna come because I just, you know, she trying to keep stuff under wraps, all right? Because you are, you are an employee dating a boss. You know, technically speaking, Brandon would be like a boss figure because he's in a higher position. He's a manager, right? And so... It's a tricky situation that's going on with Brandon. See, this is why I do not, I'm not here for people that date their co-workers, all right? Because it's just going to be a mess. It is going to be a mess. Can you imagine? Because some of y'all, some of you guys, y'all be doing that. Y'all be doing that. And y'all live for the mess, okay? Because actually, I like to stay drama-free in my professional life, okay? So, I don't like to intermingle personal and professional. I'm not going to kick it with you like that at the work. Maybe that's because I really haven't found anybody in my job that I actually, like, would be close to or actually want to kick it with afterwards. Like, we don't even rock on the same page or whatever. But still, I don't want to fuck you and then we don't work out and then I come back and I see you talking to another bitch. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? And then, you know, whatever issues we had, you know, we bring it to the workplace. Because, bitch, if you want to get messy, I can get messy. Okay? I said, Brandon, calm that down. You know, calm that down. He is thirsty, like girl. Dom Unique, when you finally get him some, he gon' he gon' he gon' gobble that shit up. Gobble gobble, bitch. <laughs> That's what he gonna do. Meanwhile, we got all this stuff going on. And um Todd and Candy, they got to go have a meeting with the whole staff. They're going to have a meeting with the whole staff because they're trying to figure out what is going on. People got their issues with Philip, trying to see if it's just Philip, you know, or if it's really the staff or whatever. And honestly, this is something that they should have been had, all right? And they did the right thing by not having Philip in this particular meeting, okay? Because we want to get the honest opinion. Now, y'all been talking. Now, when we, we'll get to the meeting in a second, but see, I don't understand. You talk all that shit after, you know, before and, 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 um, you know, when you with your people or whatever and you're voicing it in the confessions, but when it's actually time for you to speak up, you can't speak up. Okay. I just was sitting there like, what? Meanwhile, Brandon up there talking to, um, you know, Shandrika, you know, and then said that Shandrika, she do her job right, but I guess for like Philip to impress him, she got to go above and beyond and do a little bit more or whatever. Meanwhile, she up there at the hostess stand, you know, ain't barely doing shit because ain't nobody coming in there. But then here come Patrick and Safari. Now, see, this is the part that really bothered me. I don't know what it is. It feels like it's lingering things that's going on between Patrick and um Shandrika because both of y'all are in relationships, right? Shandrika, you is engaged right to Mr. Tinder. Okay, you is engaged from June Bug from Tinder, bitch. So why you feeling some type of way that Patrick brought his bitch up in there? Okay. And then Patrick, you felt some type of way when you saw his uh when you saw uh Mr. June last week. Okay, I understand that y'all got into y'all little tussle. And truth be told, y'all ain't need to get in no tussle. Okay, y'all ain't need to do all of that. I said 
said, oh, it's some sexual tension right there. Y'all just need to fuck it out one more time. That's what it is, okay? You know, Safari, she sitting there. He said, my girl wants something to eat. She wanted some cornbread and a water. You know, she vegan, so all she could eat is the cornbread. But, baby, the vegan, the cornbread ain't vegan. It got mayonnaise. I said, the cornbread got mayonnaise in it? That's a southern thing? I said, that ain't Jiffy Mix. That's homemade, huh? Okay, you know. And um, he said, just give me a salad. Bitch, I'm not finna go to no goddamn restaurant and a soul food restaurant at that and go order some salad. You better give me some of the chicken, okay? I put off my diet. You know, I am i don't do fried food like that. You know what I'm saying? I give me a little bit of taste of the fried chicken just for that. You know, give me... I want to taste this cornbread with the mayonnaise up in it, okay? Um, I don't do greens, you know what I'm saying? Give me some of that mac and cheese. Give me some of the... You got some potato salad? Give me some of that too, okay? Just give me everything right about now. Let me just taste on it. You know what I'm saying? Coming there for no goddamn salad. I said, Patrick, what is this? And then y'all said right there in front of Shandrika. Shandrika sitting there like this. Why this motherfucker had to bring her up in here? And then you're going to bring her up in here out of all the restaurants that's up in um, Atlanta. And then you're going to sit right here in front of me. Like, what is this about? I said, girl, why are you so pressed and bothered by him? I said, oh, my God, what is cool? Hey, y'all need to have a conversation. Y'all need to get this out y'all systems. Because ain't no way in hell if I'm happy in my relationship, a dick that wasn't really mad, that it was just a situation ship, it, it's going to get underneath my skin. But then did you hear that Dominique said that they actually was like in a relationship or some shit like that? I said, oh, so that's what it is. Meanwhile, Brandy come over there. He invite, um, you know, them to the uh birthday list get together that he having. And then Torrin comes over and, you know. Remember, Safari said she didn't want Torrin to do the interior decorating. She wanted to do the interior decorating of, uh, you know, Patrick's place. And, um, you know, she looking at him like, tell him, babe. Tell him, babe. So, Torrin asking her questions and shit. And so, he had to be like, listen, they want to do the interior decorating. And so, I'm going to pull you off the job. And he was like, I mean... Oh, oh, okay, if that's what you want to do, Miss Lady. You know, I didn't know that that was your field or whatever. I thought you was sucking, freezing fat or whatever and doing lace fronts. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Um, Her fucking lace is bothering me because it's like y'all put, okay, y'all put like makeup right here because I can see like the makeup or whatever. Is it the, the, the color of the, the, the stocking cap underneath? You can see it so clearly right there in that part and it's bothering me so much. All right. Meanwhile, um, and then, you know, she was like, I think Torrin brought up the housewarming party. She said, no, we ain't having no housewarming party. I said, oh, okay. That's kind of, you know, and I'm sitting here like, why can't have no housewarming party? Tor uh, uh, Patrick was basically like, you know, I don't, I don't, she don't want nobody to know where I live at or whatever. And I'm just sitting here like, but you literally just said that on the first episode. And I know y'all didn't see this yet, but Miss Girl, he done told everybody already where he live at. He didn't get the exact address, but bitch, we can figure it out. You said you live behind old lady gang. You said you live behind old lady gang. Like, bitch, all we got to do is go door to door behind old lady gang. Okay, like what? You don't want nobody to know where he live at, get up in his house or whatever. Okay, fine. Now, at first, I thought it was, you know, let's take a little bit of precautions. But uh, it really ain't that. It really ain't that. It's giving very much insecurity, okay? It's giving much very, I'm insecure about where I stand with this man. Because he used to be a hoe. And because he used to deal with some of the people that's up in the um restaurant. That's what it's giving. And we'll see that later on in the episode. Brandon and Dom Unique, you know, they still doing their little flirtatious shit. Dom Unique don't even know if she truly in a relationship with him. Like, she don't know where she stand or where she want to go. But see, Brandon is so head over heels for him. I mean, for uh, Dom Unique, okay? Bitch, I'm sitting here like... The men on the show, when they get into the relationship, from what I'm seeing, they get sprung. Because Patrick is sprung. He is pussy whipped at this point. You know, um, Brandon, I don't even know if he even got a taste. Probably got a little smell of it. But I don't even know if he got the head in. But daddy is sprung. He is sprung. He is whipped, okay? His nose is wide the fuck open with Dominique, uh scent, okay? And, um... Uh, uh, what's, what, what, what she, he wanted her to come to the birthday party, 
And she was like, I don't know if I'm going to come. Nana insists I'm not going to come. He was like, you know, I told my mama that she was going to be there and everything. I said, you telling your mama, baby, I'm not going to tell my mama, my sister, my people about anybody that I'm looking at. I'm thinking about being where I want to be with unless that thing is official, official. Okay? We didn't talk to, about it and we didn't say, listen, you my boyfriend, I'm your girlfriend or whatever situation that it is. Okay? That's when you tell them. Okay? When y'all know officially what it is that you guys are. Not trying to figure out if we're going to be together, if we just dating, if we just messing around. No, y'all don't do no stuff like that because she could have embarrassed your ass at your party because you up here with your nose wide open thinking that y'all in a relationship and you're just talking talking does not a relationship make okay meanwhile candy come up in there ty come up in there they getting ready to um had a little uh you know staff meeting okay but before that we see philip we get introduced i think his name was andre or andre 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 or andrew girl his friend okay i said you know what philip you one of the pretty ones that have pretty friends. I will give you that. Philip is fine to me. He is fine to me, but he a bitch sometimes. And it be making me mad because I truly want to like him just because he look good. You know, it's shallow. Listen, we all got a shallow part. We have a shallow part of us, okay? I do like to look at pretty things, and he's a pretty looking person. Andrew, too. Whatever his name is, I was like, oh, my God. Your eyebrows are perfectly plucked. Okay, and your beard is just like perfectly lined up and everything. That is cute. Oh, like the bird came out of me. <laughs> anyway, moving on from that. Um, you know, he's venting his little frustration of how he feel about what's going on in the restaurant and how the people ain't giving him respect, you know. And even his friend know that, you know, you a little hard ass, okay? You a little hard ass and, you know, it's it's a little tough to get along with you sometimes, all right? And I know Philip, his whole thing is he's trying to bring in more professionalism and I want you to do that too. We're not telling you not to do your job and we're not telling you to be best friends or besties with the employers uh, or I should say the employees, but... You have to find another approach to get these people to listen to you or just go ahead and fire their asses. Because obviously one way that you're doing it is not working. You know, and like I said, we have to admit that it's not just Philip, it's the employees too. Because they're so used to doing whatever the fuck it is that they want to do. Um, and Candy and Todd, that's part, part of your problem too. That's y'all fault as well because whatever atmosphere y'all put up in there and y'all allowed this shit to circle and to continue to go on, okay? Y'all should have, as soon as y'all saw people start getting out of line, you should have been nipped that shit in the bud. It shouldn't have been able to continue to the fact that y'all got to find 15,000 different managers, okay? Just to manage these unruly employees according to Philip. You know what I'm saying? So... They having this staff meeting. You got the OLG up in there, Aunt Bertha, Aunt Nora, and Mama Joyce, okay? Meanwhile, did y'all see at the very beginning of the episode when the people, the production was like, because the, uh, the aunties were sitting on the couch, and they was like, anybody got gum? Anybody got gum? And Joyce put her gum up on the tap. <laughs> Aunt Bertha said, move that paper out of my face. She, I'm trying to go home. I want to go home. Aunt Bertha, it's me. Y'all can... People can feel the way that they want to feel, but bitch, um, Bertha is truly me. Like, bitch, I, come on, get, can we get this done so I can go home? Like, you better be glad that my time, I gave y'all my time. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, chop this up. Like, hurry up. Meanwhile, they having this meeting, and they trying to get, you know, people what they said. If they have something that they want to say that's going on, present your issues. Candy and Ty gave them the floor. The first person finally speak up at the a minute of silence. I said, oh, y'all finna be scared now? Mr. Juju, he said, listen, we need some server trays or something like that. And um, Candy was like, we already got the server trays. Don Juan said, yeah, they came in, they in the back. And it was like, well, how the fuck we supposed to know that they in the back? Brandon didn't know that they was in the back. And I said, Brandon, you the goddamn manager. You don't know that shit had came in and stuff is in the back or whatever. Like, what is going on? See, this is why people don't respect your ass because you really don't do what you're supposed to do. You just dead for the atmosphere, you know? And even Patrick said that the thing about Brandon is he gets distracted easily, especially when a pretty woman comes in there, you know? Um, <clears throat> you got Rashard. Richard, he is so Gen Z, Gen Z or whatever. He ain't no millennial because this motherfucker, his issue and complaint is the fact that 
he got to take orders and stuff down or reservations down or whatever by hand instead of an iPad. Because the stuff that I've been at, you know, we use iPads and stuff like that. I said, baby, write this shit down. What's wrong with your hand? You don't know how to write and print? Is it really going to bother you that much? I said, what? Boy, if you don't get out of here, that is not a real complaint if you ask me. Granted, I mean, it could put it up to date or whatever, but that is not a real need. As long as your hand ain't broke and you know how to write and you can read your writing, write that shit down, okay? Meanwhile, Torian said what he had to say about Philip, okay? You know, and his attitude and everything. But then Don Juan had to come in and say, but see, Torian, you got this way that you come in like you think that you the event and you this and you that and all this. So I said, now calm down, Don. Calm down, Don. Because Torrin may do that. I haven't seen the chat. But in this incident with Philip, Philip started that shit with him. Okay, so let's not. Let's not, boo boo. Then we get into Shandrika. Shandrika, I should say. It was like, girl, they brought up the fact that somebody said some other stuff. And they was like, what's going on? Patrick. Said, well, Shandrika was saying how, you know, the food is inconsistent and um this be going on, that be going on. I said, oh, my goodness, Patrick, why are you doing this? <laughs> Patrick is a snitch. All right, let me tell you something. Melvin and Patrick, I wouldn't be hanging out with them. I wouldn't be hanging out with them. We will be strictly co-workers and we'll kiki on the job, but after work, we will not be hanging out. We cannot be friends. You want to know why? Because you are related to the boss. You are related to the owners and therefore your loyalty is going to lie with the owners, period. Because that is your family and y'all are tight like that. Bitch, that motherfucker snitched on Sean Drinker and I honestly feel the reason why he did that is because of the history that him and Sean Drinker got. It is petty. He is petty trying to stick it to Shandrika. I said, we, oh girl, one of y'all going to have to go. And I'm thinking Shandrika is going to be you because Candy ain't finna fire Patrick. Okay. I'm just sitting here like this is a mess. I said, Patrick, you really going to be a bitch and snitch like that? Granted, that's your family. That's what we expect. But really, you could have kept that to yourself. Now, what um <clears throat> Shandrika had to say about the food because... She was like, I was just reiterating what some of the customers said. A couple, a few customers come in and they was like, I was here on Monday and the food tasted this way. But then I come in this week and it don't taste the same. And this is, uh, I guess, when Melvin is not in the kitchen doing stuff. And he was saying, well, now since he's there, like just about every day, the food has been up to par. You know, they're uh, following the recipe and everything. Mind you, Melvin said he was cool with Philip. <laughs> Everybody was looking at him like, what? I said, you know. We don't see Melvin as an issue. Melvin seems like a little quiet person that just go on here, stay in the back, and do what he got to do. So, of course, he wouldn't see no issue with um, Philip because Philip 9 and 10 don't have an issue with him because he gets what he needs to do and he does it, you know? Um, everybody else just want to have an attitude or, you know, just don't want authority and, and, and can't take that whole situation. But, hey, it is what it is. Meanwhile, <laughs> while uh, Bertha said something about the fact that Brandon... I tried to say hello to Brandon, and Brandon didn't even say nothing to me back. And ever since then, it was like, I never said it'd be a cold day in hell that I speak to him again. I said, oh, brother, you petty. You petty as shit. You made that man get up and say, I apologize, and, and give you a hug and everything like that. Girl, you know, um, Mama Joyce had to call him out about, you know, uh, being up in the kitchen one day cooking and then calling him down there to help her out. And he was like, basically, no, I'm not going to do it because that ain't my job and just left. I said, see, just because, and, and, and even though, you know, it's not in your job description, sometimes it's okay to take initiative and then your boss and, you know, others can look at that and that can be used as a way to give you a promotion or give you a raise because they see that you go beyond and above sometimes, okay? You ain't got to do it all the time, but sometimes it's okay to do that when you see somebody struggling, help them out if you got the time to do that, you know? The girl that was talking about the, um, she said, who going to wipe down the, uh, where's the silverware? Because um, we all with plastic forks and stuff. I said, y'all been buying y'all shit from the store. What's going on? Who's still in the silverware? Then she said, who's supposed to be wiping down the menus? All right, Shandrika got pissed. Because you always talking about wiping down the menus every freaking episode. Every freaking time we have a goddamn meeting, that's what you're talking about. Damn, why don't you shut up? I said, now, Shandrika, 
Shandrika, was that really necessary? If she has, you you have an issue, you voice it. If she got an issue, she voices. it. This is what we are here for. And see, Shandrika, that's why people get on your ass. That's why people get on your ass. See, I like you for a little bit. You know, for certain reasons, I like you. Okay? But when I need to call your ass out, I'm going to call your ass out. You do too much, okay? And honestly, I don't understand how you still there. I really don't. I really don't. You know? Um, But... This is all food for thought that they got to think about. They're going to take with them. Meanwhile, you know, Torin and um Patrick, they meet up outside. And, you know, Torin feels some type of way about what happened with Safari and the way that she came in. And, of course, Patrick, you know, he, he, he didn't mean it for it to be like that. So, of course, he's going to go talk to her. And, of course, yes, he said that he a little whipped. That's why he did it, you know. Um... He gets on the phone because Torrin was like, we still need to have this housewoman party. He gets on the phone, call uh, Safari and told her about the housewoman party and, and about what Patrick said. I ain't even mean it like that. That's not even how I said, girl, shut up. OK, but then when he brought up the housewoman party, I already told you what I felt about that. And we ain't having it and clicked. I said, no, girl, excuse me. I don't understand why Patrick is letting her do all of this stuff. You don't want him to have a housewarming party for a place that you don't live at. It is not you and Patrick's place. It's actually Patrick's and Melvin's place. Did we even get Melvin's opinion as to where he want to have a housewoman party or not? Okay, because you don't want people at his job and everything to be at his at his place where he stay at. Wow, you know. And at first, I thought like it was a security type of thing. No, it's an insecurity thing for you because you got an issue with Torn because you feel like Torn has an issue with you now because of the fact that you know you took his job for whatever reason you took his job. Bitch, you probably don't know what you're doing. You know, you probably think that you can look on Pinterest and get a a little bit of ideas and think you an interior decorator. That's what you feel like. And then, you know, you don't want Sean Drinker there because, you know, Patrick used to fuck around with her. But y'all both in a relationship and that means that neither one of y'all trust y'all partners that or trust y'all selves around each other or whatever. Like, there's no trust there because I will give a damn. See, this is why you're not supposed to fuck employees that you work with, the, your co-workers. Look at this shit. I wish I would give a fuck about who my ex is fucking on and, and, and what she doing or whatever when I'm in a relationship. If I see you, bitch, and we in the same goddamn party, okay, cool. Now, if that's what the case was with Sandrika, I understand that you probably wouldn't want her up in the house. Understandable, but it's just the way that you say it, she presents it. It gives very much insecure, like, you know, he probably will go ahead and try to fuck her or something like that. You know, it's it's giving very much, I want to control the situation. This is not your house. That is your man's house, okay? That is your man and his cousin's place, not yours, all right? So, they're going to go to Brenda's birthday party so she can get a better feel of everybody to see if they can really have this housewoman party. That's her, I guess, compromise. I said... Man, you doing too much. You pulling out too much of the stocks for this lady. But anyway, you know, that's what happened when you were a little whipped. Um, Brian is doing his little uh, soul food egg rolls. And then Richard comes over there and they try to make it together. You know, I was like, okay, cool. Um, But Richard had a little bit of issue. Richard, Richard, Richard. He felt some type of way about things that's been going on because he like... You know, some of the, the management, the upper management, they unintelligent. Like, they lack the intelligence to lead. And I honestly, you know, usually I have a problem with Rashad because I think he a little bougie, a little stuck up, a little uppity or whatever. Like, he grew up in the suburbs and he ain't never been to the so-called ghetto with the regular people because that's how he act. Like, he's in the ghetto when he at Candy in the game, you know. Or I should say at the OLG, you know. Um, But... He had a fucking point. <laughs> I was 100% with him. Like, you can't be telling us one thing, but yet you up here fucking the employees and shit like that. You know? Uh, he was like, oops, did I mean to say that? I didn't mean to say that. I, I said, no, you said the correct thing. Because it just ain't going to do nothing but cause trouble. And you ain't really doing nothing at this point, you know, to secure your job. And now you finna cross another line by fucking around with the employees. And you want us to respect you and all this stuff. Girl, ain't nobody got time for that. So he and, and um, Brian was uh venting about that. Meanwhile, um, next week, I, I, Philip, what is your beef with Brian? 
I, I just really want to know what the beef is with Brian. Because from what we saw last week that caused him to get suspended, yes, he did kind of back talk, but it wasn't enough and it wasn't as bad unless we didn't see previous things that happened. Is it a buildup or whatever? Because I was like, that's not enough for you to say that he needs to be fired. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like you have it out for him. And I just don't understand it. Maybe it's because I'm really, you know, Brian is one of the likable ones, one of my favorites on the show. I don't know. So maybe I'm a little biased about it, but y'all let me know. Is it something else that's going on? Meanwhile, he sit down, Philip sit down with Brandon trying to get how everybody feeling, judging the temperature. He think like people may be warming up to him. And they're saying, you know, Brandon is inviting Philip to his little party or whatever. Um, Philip didn't necessarily say yes or no, but he was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I, 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 that, thank you for the invite. And I'm sitting here like, Philip, didn't you just say that you don't mingle with the um hourly employees when they was talking about going to the bar or whatever, going to their little hangout spot earlier episodes. Oh, okay. Meanwhile, Candy and Ty come back up to the restaurant because they had to talk to Don Juan. Don Juan snitching. Well, he doing his job. He doing his job. I ain't gonna call that no snitching. He was um he was out. He was like I was doing my job right. I overheard somebody talking. Brandon went outside, but then it sounded like Shandrika was talking. And basically, he go get the ring camera and overhears and catches the whole conversation. Brandon was on the phone with Shandrika, and Shandrika was going off, okay? Shandrika was going off about how Todd and Candy really don't give a fuck. You can tell them about what's going on. They don't listen. They truly don't give a fuck about how to run this restaurant and their employees and shit like that. You know, and so, of course, this pisses Todd off, especially. Um, and I understand, like, you don't want that negativity to be put out there um, on your name and on your brand. OK, but at the same time, you know, they saying that this could be cause for termination. Like, maybe we need to get rid of her. And I'm sitting here like, so because she's voicing her opinion about how other people feel, how customers may have felt. You want to fire her because it's not a, a positive thing. And usually you should be able to let your employees say the negatives that they're going through so that you can correct that so that, that it won't happen again. But I think in this case, it's a buildup of a lot of stuff that Shandrika probably has been doing. Like since episode one, she showed up late, got into it with Philip. You know, I was like, you, cause honestly, I feel like she kind of started that shit with Philip, you know, like you, you, you got into it with Philip, you know, you got sent home for that. Okay. It's just her mouth, her attitude sometimes, you know, um, but you had the opportunity at that meeting to say what it is that you needed to say, but you chose to wait afterwards and to bitch moan and complain to another employee or whatever and thinking that it was cool, thinking that it was safe or whatever, that you can go ahead and do that. And it should have been, but you got caught. Okay, you got caught. I honestly don't feel like that's a reason for her to get fired, but, you know, um, they wanted to talk to her. They wanted to talk to her. Uh, meanwhile, Brandon has his little get together and he was waiting for Dominique to show up, but then he realized that she might not show up, but, um, she did show up with Torrin and they came in and, you know, he wanted her to go talk to his mom and they talking about last names and stuff and everything. She, I know she kind of uncomfortable because Brandon is moving a little bit faster than Dominique is. He's like planning a wedding already okay he he probably got baby names picked out that's how open he is and dominique i feel like is not really there yet um of course safari comes with patrick and they do talk to Torin, and, and they try to um you know smooth the situation over like she didn't mean what she things to come out the way that they came out Girl, Torin ain't even here for it, okay? He, she was, she was, he was smiling in her face, okay? Yeah, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, but it really ain't. You know, he still feels some type of way. Meanwhile, after all of that happened, it's time to meet up with Shandrika later on. And, you know, Shandrika is shocked that they telling her what she said. And she like, who told you this? And she said, first of all, I don't think it's fair that it's just me getting called out for stuff that everybody was saying after the meeting. And it's like, it's it's, it's not fair. But girl, you got caught saying it. <laughs> you have gotten caught saying it. And they didn't tell her that she got caught and they got her on camera or whatever saying the stuff. But you got caught saying it. And so therefore... 
since they actually heard you saying it, that's why they're going to talk to you. And it's like, do you even want to work there? If this all having all these issues and you feel this way about Candy and Ty, do you even want to work there? But I also feel as though, once again, if you have a problem, it's like, do they have the environment for the employees to be able to come to upper management and to tell them any issues that's going on without the fear of, you know, getting fired or suspensions, you know, because, well, this is not happening the way that I feel is it should be happening or I don't feel like they're taking our plight into consideration or whatever and things that's going on into consideration. Like, I, I, I just want to know, is it an open environment like that? Um, because with this whole situation with Shandrika, this shouldn't be a reason that you get fired, but I'm pretty sure it's one of those situations. If she was to get fired or let go, it's because it's been given chance after chance after chance after chance. That's what I feel like it is, you know. And Shandrika, you just give that off, okay? For somebody, I, I, Shandrika, what else do you do? You said, girl, you are making $12 an hour. Now, then you say that that's what you making or that's what Candy just paying. $12 an hour to host. To host, okay? Girl, I would have been left. I would have been found something else. You know, I probably would have worked there for part-time. But, girl, I would have did something else, okay? Like, I don't know. If you got all these issues, I'm with Titan. Y'all a bitch. Do you even want to work here? <laughs> Do you even want to work here? Like, what it is. But, um, I said, you got to be careful who you talking to and where you talking at. Because people, it's, it is everywhere. And you can't trust nobody at your place of work. People that you think are your friends would be the main one snitching on your ass, all right? But that was old lady gang. Y'all tell me uh, how y'all feel about the episode. Girl, like I said, if Candy pop up with a whole new crew next season, I will not be surprised. I'll see y'all later. Peace.